Hi everybody, it's Mark Schelsch here. This is the Mark Art Show coming to you from Galleria de las Islas in Metro Manila, Philippines. Hey guys, sorry I was away yesterday. I came in early and then got caught up. Uh, had to go to an exhibition in the afternoon and I just didn't get a chance to do the blog or video. And it was Sunday so I can use that as an excuse. But today we're back to normal vlogs and videos. Hey, I went and saw a show yesterday afternoon. It was really good show. Uh, my only complaint was that their labels were not great. It was hard to tell what the things were. But other than that, it was a good show. And that's why I want to talk about what I want to talk about today. You know, the three things that I talk about most are doing videos, doing blogs, and storytelling. Those three things I think are so important in the art world. And today I want to talk about storytelling your art. Now, a lot of you have heard this. I hope today it's a little different because I want to try and explain why I want people to do it more than, uh, you know, you should do this. Storytelling your art is so important because, you know, having worked in galleries for a long time, I know that most collectors, when they come in, they'll say to me, Mark, what's this about? What's this artist saying? What's going on here? Now, if your paintings are very clear and you can put a title on that says it all anyway, like Sunset Over the Ocean, that title in itself tells a story. But for a lot of paintings, like the ones that are hanging around me right this minute, they really need some kind of explanation to go, to, go with them. Now, why do I want artists to storytell? because I want artists to actually engage other parts of themselves, not just their ability to paint. You see, I want you to learn to see your work. And when you see it clearly, it means that you can easily explain what this work's all about. And that's what engages people. People want to know why you do it. People want to know what you were thinking about at the time. I know that's true because that's what collectors ask me. They say, Mark, what's it about? What were they trying to say? What's, what's this artist's direction? What's happening here? And if the artist hasn't come and told me, it's very hard for me. I just got to make stuff up to try and make it sound like I know what I'm talking about. So I want you artists to really engage the painting yourself. Learn to see the painting. Now, I know you see the painting. I know you painted it. I know all that. But I know for myself, when I used to paint full time, I had an outdoor studio and I'd come out of the studio and bring out the paintings that I'd been working on that day or that week, because I was always working on more than one painting at a time. And I'd line them all up in the afternoon, late in the afternoon, and I'd sit down with my journal and I would stare at these paintings. And I'd stare and look at them and kind of, you know, think about what's going on here? What's wrong? What's right? What's happening? What am I doing? What am I creating? Is this, is this the, the, the voice I want to have? And I used to write down my thoughts. Uh, and out of that, I could then get stories about what my paintings were about. And I began to understand my paintings better because all of a sudden, I not only was locking in my imagination to paint it, I was now locking in my imagination to explain it and thereby giving myself a voice. You see, artists, when we use the, the term, uh, we say, well, my paintings speak for themselves. Really, what we're saying out loud is, look, I, I'm trying to make an excuse here and hide because I don't want to express my voice. I don't want to express what this art is about. And we need to, because that's the that makes you different. That's what sets you apart. If every artist believes, ah, oh, their, art, their work speaks for themselves, and you're the one artist who puts stories about your work, you're going to be different and you're going to stand out and you're going to get attention and people are going to go, wow, look at this. Now, let's talk about the stories. I am not talking about writing out a novel on every painting. No, I'm not doing that. I'm talking about writing out a few clear thoughts about what this painting is saying. Now, let's talk about titles. Nowhere is it written down that a title must be one, two, or three words. And we often see that. Landscape at uh, Brisbane. Um, we, uh, Manila Waterfront. Um, view of the Harbour. We see these kind of titles. And they're not really a story. They're just, this is what it is. It's a view of the Harbour. And what I would like to see artists do, instead of writing 
one or two words for their titles, why not write two sentences? Why not make your, your, your title a sentence? Why not make it an explanation of what your painting is rather than just putting, um, you know, series number four blue? Yeah, what people put, it's like stupid things people write on paintings. But why not sit down and write two sentences or three sentences or one sentence? I mean, I'm all for keeping it simple, but I'm also for communicating an idea in the title. So the title does not, there's nowhere it says the title has to be a word or one word or two words. The title can be a little tiny short story in itself. Now, the reason we have short titles is because galleries have these little tiny uh, title cards and you can't get much on it. But if you have a long story to go in your title, they're gonna have to get a bigger title card. That's all there is to it. Because nobody says a title has to be two words. Honestly, I don't, no one's ever shown me it written down anywhere. You know, in the, in, the, in the 15 ways to run a gallery, I've never seen, oh, I've never seen the 15 ways to run a gallery, but um, I, there's no rules. And this is where artists really get caught up. A lot of artists who, which really amazes me because artists are incredibly uh, creative, imaginative people who, whose imaginations run wild, are so willing and quickly able to get caught in these little tiny things that nobody ever said you had to do. Nobody says you have to put one word for a title. You can write a sentence for a title. And why not do that? If that sentence will clearly define what your painting is about and give it clarity and make it so much easier for the viewer to understand it, why not do that? Nobody said you can't. We just don't because Custom says we don't. And that's why it is. You know, I, I, I'm all for breaking with custom. I'm all for breaking and changing things. I'm all for getting attention. Now, if every artist, as I said, if every artist puts, uh, you know, a title on there that says one word or two words, and you have sentences for titles, people will stop and read yours quicker and most likely will be engaged with your painting because you're telling them something about the painting. And you know, we've got to engage people, not just engage them with their sight and what they're seeing, but also engage them with their, you know, their intelligence and what, is, what this is all about. Artists, be different. Artists, be prepared to break the mold. Be prepared to step out where nobody else will be. You know, and I know someone's going to write me and say, well, Mark, if everybody does storytelling their art, then it won't be, you know, uh, uncommon. Well, the truth is most artists won't do what I'm saying. I know that. But I want you to really think about this, guys. I want you to think about storytelling your art, not novels, in two or three sentences. Get it down to two sentences, three sentences, and make it the title. You know, uh, why not? Nobody says you can't do that. So, you know, it's very important that we convey what we are trying to paint in words as well. You know, if you can put it in words, put it in paint and then put it in words there, you've got it tied up. You've got something there that's important. So guys, I just want you to think about that. Learning to see your art differently. Learning to engage your imagination in what is this about in words? Not just with a paintbrush, but also be able to, to speak about what you're doing. And giving yourself a voice where you then say what this painting is about. See, I, I don't understand, as I said, artists are incredibly creative people, incredibly bold and do things that are really wonderful. And yet when it comes to the painting and once it's finished, they don't want to give that painting a voice, their voice. And yet they're the creators, they're the ones who made it. So what I'm saying, give it a voice, write a little story, a sentence, two sentences, three sentences, make it the title. You've got nothing to lose. You, they don't chop hands off for this, you know, you're not going to be in trouble. There's no one has a set rule. Some galleries might say to you, well, that's a big title, you know, we've only got a little title card. You can say, well, maybe you've got to get a bigger title card. <laughs> maybe that's the answer here. I mean. You have to express what you want, artist, and say it your way. I'm not going to go any further then. 
I love storytelling. I love artists who storytell. I think it makes such a difference to the sale process and engages people in a beautiful way. Okay, guys, you have a wonderful day. It's Monday here. So a brand new week, uh, a week with lots of holidays in it this week in, in this country. And uh, I'm going to make videos all week. Uh, I look forward to talking to you when I am traveling around more. Uh, I ask you to reach out and touch people and care for people. Uh, people are hurting, so hugs and smiles are free. You have a wonderful day, and I'm going to talk to you tomorrow. Ciao.